Hello and welcome to BioRuzid Lessons. Today we are going to start studying biochemistry and to start studying biochemistry we will actually start revising chemistry. So let's take a look at some atoms. So this guy is the smaller one, though it's a hydrogen and it contains one proton in the nucleus and it usually has one electron flying around this nucleus. So one proton, one electron. I believe you remember this. The number of protons are going to be equivalent to the number of electrons that may fly around that nucleus. Protons are positive, electrons are negative. Protons stay in the nucleus, electrons stay flying around. To give you another example, lithium has three protons in the nucleus. I'm not representing here the neutrons because for our example here it doesn't matter. But because it contains three protons in the nucleus, it's going to be having three electrons flying around it. Um, another thing that can be visible here is that <coughs> lithium contains two shells of electrons flying around it. They have one first shell that contains two electrons and then has a third one that's containing one electron. The first electronic shell can have up to two electrons. The second electronic shell, then you're going to be having eight, and then you're going to be you know, working with this here on. So lithium, three electrons. And sodium, another important guy for us, because we like it, we eat no sodium chloride, table salt. Sodium contains 11 protons in the nucleus, and it contains 11 electrons flying around it. It contains two in the first shell, so the first shell is complete. It contains eight in the second shell, the second shell is complete, and then it contains one electron flying in the last shell. If we put these guys together, oh no, I have one, another one here. Yeah, sorry, I was forgetting. 19 protons in the last uh, in the in the in the nucleus. It has uh, 19 electrons flying around it. It has two, eight, eight. And in the last shell, it contains one electron. If you saw a trend here, all these elements that I showed you, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, they have one electron in the last shell. So, as a result, they are in what we call group one. They are over here because they contain one electron in the last shell, which includes hydrogen. It's not a typical group one uh, element, but it, it contains one electron in the last shell. So, we put the, it there in the group one. Okay, so that's what defines it, one electron in the last shell. By the way, if you remember your chemistry as well, the, 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 the lines here represent the number of shells. So hydrogen and helium have one shell, lithium, beryllium, uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, whatever, they have two shells, uh, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine. Uh, chloride, they contain three shells and so on. This will be important for us as well in a while. Okay, <clears throat> let's take a look at a few more examples of atoms. Beryllium contains four protons in the nucleus, four electrons flying around, two in the first shell, two in the second shell. Magnesium, it contains 12 protons in the nucleus, so it's going to be containing 12 electrons flying around, two in the first shell, eight in the second, two in the last shell. Okay, and calcium, we like calcium as well, no, it gives us uh, muscle movements, synapse transmission and strong bones and teeth. It's going to be having 20 protons in the nucleus, so 20 electrons flying around, 2, 8, 8 and 2 in the last one. So as you saw, these guys, they contain 2 electrons in the last shell, so they are in group 2. They are the guys that contains 2 electrons in the last shell, so group 2, very good. And one more example of groups for you. Fluorine contains nine protons. So it contains uh, <clears throat> two electrons in the first shell, seven electrons in the last shell. Chlorine, okay, 17 protons. So it contains two in the first shell, eight in the second, and it contains seven electrons in the last shell. So uh, I'm not going to be putting the others, but you probably realize that fluorine, chloride, bromine, iodine, they are group seven. They are going to be having seven electrons in the last shell. So why I'm, I'm reminding you of this basic chemistry? Because this is going to be important for us to do ionic bonds. And ionic bonds 
electrons may be given or may be taken. This here on the left is a sodium, you know, the, the metallic sodium when it's you know, with all its electrons. And on the right, it's a, a, a sodium ion, a sodium that has given away the last electron. Why does it give away the last elect electron? If it's supposed to have electron, uh, uh, 11 electrons because it has 11 protons. Well, the atoms, they, they, uh, they tend to be more stable. And in biology, we're going to say they like, they are happy when the last shell is complete. Sodium on the left contains 11 protons, 11 electrons. It should be like that. But there is one electron wandering around there, and this guy is not very happy. So there are two ways for this guy to become happy. It may gain seven electrons and complete the third shell, or it may lose one. What's easier? To gain seven or to lose one? Yes, you realize that is to lose one. So this guy here on the right, they, it lost one electron. So it contains 10 electrons, 11 protons, so it is one positive charge over here because it contains one more proton, then it contains electrons. Okay, so there it is. Sodium is a giver because it likes giving electrons. In the same way as everybody in group one, they have one electronless shell, they like giving one electron. <coughs> so here, we have a, a, a reaction between sodium chloride happening. Sodium is a giver. It has one electronless shell. It's very easy to give one, very difficult to get seven. Chloride, on the other hand, contains seven electronless shell. It's much easier to receive one than to give seven. So chlorine are takers. Sodium is a giver, chlorine is a taker. They get together. They become happy when sodium gives one electron to chlorine. So sodium becomes positive, one electron less than the number of protons, and chloride becomes negative. It contains one electron more than the number of protons. So chlorine is a taker. Group seven, by the way, they are strong takers. They really like to take electrons from whoever is wanting to give them. Okay, so let's make here the chemical reaction, the ionic bond, sodium got together to chlorine, it gave its electrons to chlorine, and then became positive, and we made Na plus Cl minus. So this is, becomes Na plus because it's one positive, and Cl minus over here. Yeah, very good. I, I'm pretty sure you remember this. Uh, potassium and fluoride. Potassium is group one, contains one electron shell. Fluorine is group seven, contains seven electron shell. How are they going to become happy? Like this. So this is going to be making K plus fluoride minus. <coughs> Okay, so there it goes. And what about calcium? Calcium contains two electrons less shell. So it can give one electron, for example, for a chlorine. That's crazy to receive one electron. However, it only gave one electron because chlorine can get one electron. So how is it going to be giving the second electron to this chlorine? It won't. It's going to be giving it to another chlorine. So now we are going to be making calcium. Two plus chloride minus two because we have two chlorides over there. We just made ionic bond between calcium and chloride. Okay, so as you probably have realized, uh, group one <coughs> makes ionic bonds with group seven, usually one to one or one sodium, one chloride. Uh, group two makes ionic bonds as well with group seven, but usually it's one for two, so one magnesium for two fluorides. Uh, and those are the, the guys that are more common to be making ionic bonds, okay? Uh, just to illustrate some ionic bonds, lithium and fluor, potassium and fluor, magnesium and chloride. This is going to be making lithium fluoride. This is going to be making potassium fluoride. And this is going to be making MgCl2 because this here will be two positives and this is going to be one negative here, positive and negative, positive and negative. This is how it is done. Those are ionic bonds. Uh, <clears throat> this is going to be important for us later when we're studying biochemistry in a few cases. So I hope you have reminded yourselves of this. To carry on on the bonds, let's talk about covalent bonds. Sometimes 
uh, atoms, they, they have a problem. For example, here, hydrogen. Who you give, who you take. Hydrogen, we saw before, that contains one electronless shell. How can it become happy? Oh, it can give one and have no electronless shell, or it can take one and have two electronless shells. Either way, it would be happy. The problem is who you give, who you take. So, hydrogen cannot decide that because they are balanced. There is no way that one you take, one you give, because they are actually identical. So, in this case, there will be a covalent bond. When they don't give, they share. So, if I put those, <coughs> those hydrogens together, they are going to be getting close enough for the electrons from both of them to be flying around both of them. What will happen here is that this electron will fly around, fly around, fly around. Those, they are going to be staying, flying around both of them. So, they made a covalent bond. Hydrogens can make one covalent bond. So, there it is. Hydrogen with hydrogen, covalent bond. So, hydrogens are very good in making one covalent bond because they may share one electron. So, we are going to be represented like this. Covalent bonds are represented by a line. Okay? So, there is hydrogen, one covalent bond. What about oxygen? Uh, what oxygen can do? Okay, oxygen is capable of doing covalent bonds as well, for example, with hydrogen. So, uh, oxygen can share one of its electrons with the, the hydrogen, the share another electron with another hydrogen. Now the hydrogen is happy because there will be two electrons flying around it, so two electrons is the complete for the first shell, and the oxygen is going to be having now eight electrons flying around because they, it had six in the last shell, and now with two extras that are, are, are being shared, they are going to be having eight electrons in the last shell. So oxygen is good to make two covalent bonds. So there it is, oxygen making two covalent bonds, in this case here making water, and we represent oxygen capable of making two covalent bonds. What about nitrogen? Well, nitrogen contains five electrons in the last shell. So how many electrons do they need to become happy? They need to have eight, so they need uh, three extra electrons. So can they share three? Yes, they can. So in this case here, share with hydrogen. They're going to be sharing, hydrogen will be happy, and they have just received three extra electrons flying around uh, the nitrogen, so the nitrogen now has eight electrons flying around it, so the nitrogen is happy. Nitrogen is capable of making three covalent bonds, we represent it like that, three uh, straight lines. And finally, the star of the show, carbon. Carbon contains four electrons less shell. That means it is short of four. So, as you probably remember by now, it can share four electrons. So, in this case, C is going to be sharing electrons with four hydrogens, making CH4. So, carbon is capable of sharing four electrons, making four covalent bonds. That's it. This here is the way that you do covalent bonds. Okay? So, oxygen, for example, the O2 molecule is made by covalent bonds. So, oxygen can make two covalent bonds, so one, two, with another oxygen. So, this guy here is happy. What about carbon dioxide? Carbon is capable of making four. One, two, three, four. Oxygen is capable of making two. So there is carbon dioxide. It's happy. What about this guy? C2H6. So C connected to the carbon. And then we have six hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this guy here now is happy. The carbons are happy with four covalent bonds each. The hydrogens are happy. Very good. And finally, what about this here? Ooh, now we have a problem. Carbon connected to another carbon with four hydrogens in total, so one, two, three, and four. But there's a problem now because those carbons are only making three covalent bonds. So what they can do? They can make a covalent bond between themselves, and now each carbon is making four covalent bonds. The carbon is happy as well. This is how we make covalent bonds, and this is going to be extremely important when we, bu when we build biological molecules. Okay? So just to remind you, hydrogen can make one covalent bond, oxygen and sulfur can make two covalent bonds, nitrogen can make three, and carbon can make four covalent bonds. Okay? So if you remember those five, building molecules, checking molecules is going to be much, much, much easier. So I hope you had fun remembering your chemistry. 
and getting prepared for us to study biochemistry. Bye-bye. See you next time.